where Satan is there, and where temptation is lurking everywhere, and you and I need to be accountable. Accountability is a protection. And this is why there are men, for example, who are in accountability groups, women in accountability groups, and God intends for men to be accountable to men, women to be accountable to women. There's no such thing as being unaccountable to anybody. And you call the opposite of accountability rebellion. I don't want to be accountable to anybody, but you are. And for example, you're accountable to the government. And most of you, I, th I certainly hope all of you are accountable at this point. For example, uh, you're accountable to pay your taxes. I didn't say you liked it. I said, we are accountable. That is, we have to be honest and above board and be truthful about it. You're accountable to God, for example, about your tithe. And accountability is a godly principle. It is always for our protection, our motivation, uh, our joy, our excitement, our, listen, building relationships with other people. And the bottom line is this. We all live in a world that's full of the flesh and temptation. We all need to be accountable to somebody or somebodies, and there's no exception. It's a law of God. It's a principle of Scripture. But the basic truth is, it's just good for everybody because that strengthens us. Accountability is part of a source of our strength. It builds our courage. It builds our faith. We, we see others that we're accountable to doing the right thing, and so we're encouraged, and they're good examples to us. And so all of that is for our benefit. So when a person says, well, I don't want to be accountable, I don't, I don't think that's what God uh, wants in my life, then you've missed it. Now, there's some requirements. And one of the first requirements is this. I've got to be trustworthy. Accountability is all about being trustworthy and being honest, and being dependable, and being transparent, and being above board about things, and, and thinking uh, about the other person and uh, what's best. In other words, uh, just anybody is not accountable. If you're not trustworthy, you, it's not going to work. If you're not honest, it's not going to work. And if a person finds themselves, for example, wanting to cover up and um, refuse to be sincere, then uh, they're going to have a problem. It, to be accountable, I have to have convictions. Let's say that I'm in an accountability group. There are four of us. Well, it's not going to do any good to have an accountability group if you don't have honesty, transparency, openness, willingness to speak the things that uh, you see, and have some conviction about things. If you have no conviction, there's no accountability. Somebody says, well, I'm not a theologian. You don't have to be a theologian. You just have to have convictions. The truth is, everybody is a theologian to some degree. That is, you, be, you have certain beliefs about things. And if a person says he's an atheist, he's just in the dark. That's what he is. And if somebody says, well, I'm an agnostic. I don't believe in God. Well, let me just say this to you. If you think that relieves you of being accountable, you better think twice. Because the Bible doesn't say you're accountable to God unless you don't believe in Him or unless you have doubts about Him. We are all accountable for our life here and now. And one of these days, we'll stand before Him and give a full account of our entire life. You say, well, what about all those things I've been forgiven for? Right? You don't have to. He's not going to bring up. In other words, if you're a believer, when you stand before His presence, He's not going to bring up, let's say you did this on that day and this on that day. And I can remember... Earlier in life when I'd hear pastors talk about the judgment, this is what they'd say. They'd say things like this. When you stand before God, He's going to have this, this movie. That's as old as this is. This movie before you, and He's just going to play your life so that everybody in the world sees your sin. He's going to judge you. He used to scare me to death. And I'd think, <laughs> my goodness, what's going to be on my film? <laughs> but you know what? All of that was just ignorance. That's all that was. Because that's not what the Bible says. What I'm forgiven for, he's forgotten. But you say, well, but now do you lose? Yes. When you waste time, you lose. When you waste finances, you lose. When you waste relationships and love, you lose. It's not that he, in other words, the judgment isn't, I'm going to do this to you. But in the judgment, I think we will see what we lost. We go, we go, we go into heaven. We're going to be blessed. 
And we will be rewarded on the basis of our conduct, our attitude, and the way we've lived our life. And what we've messed up on, we don't get any rewards for that. And what we've done right, we will be rewarded. But there's a day of accountability. And it's strange to me that people today, oftentimes in high places of office in this country, act, live, and decide as if there was no accountability whatsoever. There is accountability, great accountability. And um, if a person doesn't have the courage and the character to be what they ought to be, then they can't, they can't be in an accountability group. So let's put it this way. As a believer, you're accountable to Jesus every single day. If you're an unbeliever, you're still accountable to God every single day. In other words, there's no such thing as being unaccountable in the eyes of God. You may act like it, live like it, but what you're doing is just driving other people away because who can trust you? If you refuse to be accountable, you're not trustworthy. Because you, we might ask ourselves the question, why do people do that? And it's interesting that people who are unaccountable, uh, when you confront them, they're quick to complain, quick to accuse, and quick to excuse because they, they don't want to give an account. And you've met people like that, maybe somebody that you work around. And uh, no matter what you try to do to confront them, they have an excuse. Or um, uh, are they are they're critical. In other words, they jump to criticize someone else to defend their failure. Accountability is a wonderful thing because it motivates us and it energizes us and it motivates us to want to do our best and be our best and look our best and count for God in some fashion. But you know, I might ask the questions, well, uh, why do people object to, why do people object to being accountable? Well, it's real simple. They're dishonest. That's one reason. They're dishonest. And because they're dishonest, they don't want to be accountable. For example, why do you think businesses have these machines that, of course, they're different things. They, you, you punch your car, you punch in every morning, you punch in when you leave. Why don't they just say, well, you know, we start at 8 and we leave at 5? No, because people are so dishonest, they, they get there 30 minutes after and leave 30 minutes before. There are a lot of things that you and I have to put up with because of people's dishonesty and they're, they're unwilling to be accountable. And you see, we, we have so much freedom and liberty in this country. And when we don't take responsibility, what happens is people make decisions that all of us suffer as a result. And so you have to ask yourself the question, who are you, is, is there one person in your life that you're accountable to? You say, well, I am married. Well, then you're accountable to him or to her. Well, I do have parents, then you're accountable to them. Well, um, I do work at a certain place, then you're accountable to them. Well, I do go to a certain church, then you're accountable at the church. We're all accountable. And it's a good thing to be accountable. But people who are not, they're dishonest, for example. Oftentimes, they're trying to cover up something in their life. Usually, they have a little bit of rebellion in them. And usually, they're slothful. Because, you see, if you don't have any accountability, then why get up? when you don't feel like getting up and going to work when you just don't want to go anyway. So I think about people call in and say, I'm sick. Now think about this. If you work somewhere and uh, you're accountable to be there at a certain time and you just don't feel like you want to go today. So you call in and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm on sick leave. You're not sick. You just lied. That's what you did. And what you did is you sent a deceptive message. So the next day, you come back to work, and somebody says, well, what did you, man, I had most fun yesterday. Let me tell you what I did. You just shut your testimony right there. It is deception. It is lying. When you quit beforehand, it is deception. If you quit a half an hour early, then you should say, dock my pay 30 minutes I left earlier. How many folks will do that? Accountability is just being the person we claim to be. And of all people who ought to do that is believers. We ought to be absolutely as clean as we can possibly be about any and every circumstance of life. And some people are unaccountable. Uh, they don't want to be accountable because 
they fear a loss. Well, if, I, if I'm really honest about that, I may not have this opportunity. Well, if I'm really uh, uh, up above board about all this thing, I may, I may lose, lose this privilege. No. The more honest and on top you are and the more open you are, the more people trust you to do and to be the best you can. Who wants to be around somebody who's untrustworthy? For example, do you want to tell the deepest part of your life to a gossip? No, you don't. So listen to me carefully. A gossip is an untrustworthy person to whom you do not want to be accountable because what you openly share in your heart with somebody, something you've been through, some hurt, some pain, or some disaster, or something you've done in your life that you wouldn't want anybody else to know about but somebody who's a close friend because they'll understand, and then they